Hello, Space Cadets. It's your pal Vector Spaceman once again, coming to you live once more from Harbor Station. Broadcasting on all frequencies, of course, to our beautiful planet Earth. Now, whether you're watching us live or catching us after the show tonight, we're glad to have you on board. Thanks for helping us make outer space the place to be, as we get set to rocket into yet another session of all the things we like to love and love to share. Today's Thursday, January 13th, 2022. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We're one day closer to the weekend, and it can't come soon enough. Tonight, we're going to try to take things easy and work on some art assets, something we can use for future streams, maybe as early as this weekend even. Stick around to see what we're up to. If you missed the last show, we had our long overdue return to the very fun, very creative game Minecraft. We got to tour around a community server hosted by the wonderful Mana Yu, longtime friend of the show. Everybody be sure to check her out here on Twitch, a fellow virtual streamer. And then we jumped into creative mode to start roughing out ideas for our future space base. I was pretty satisfied with what we came up with. There's still room for improvement though, and of course we'll have to research how we can acquire all the parts that we need to go ahead and build our full-fledged final working product. Expect more Minecraft in the near future. And of course, if you want to stay up to date with all of our broadcasts, then be sure to follow Vector Spaceman on Twitter, YouTube, and right here on Twitch. All right, Space Cadets, we return to yet another art stream, our second straight week in a row that we've uh, been doing these. I think art streams are a great way to spend time here on the show. Very relaxing, very productive and very informative for those of our viewers interested in pursuing live 2D modeling and rigging as a hobby themselves. It's a win-win for everybody, don't you think? And what's the project for tonight, Space Cadets? Well, I thought we'd try to work on another Spaceman outfit that I've been considering doing for a while. A sports jersey of sorts that we can pop on when we do our Rocket League stream, seeing as those tend to be pretty frequent here on the show. So that's the plan. We'll see how much we can get done, see how far we can get, and if we finish with time to spare, we'll think up something else to work on. Maybe finally finish up our fifth channel emote slot. Of course, you can earn those by spending channel points here, our cadet credits. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that we could work on. And of course, all the while, we'll be watching the chat, conversing with whoever's hanging out with us tonight. So as always, for those of you listening live, feel free to drop a comment in the chat and join the conversation. All right, Space Cadets. Without further ado, let's get started with today's show, shall we? Pop us on in the background for some relaxing commentary or keep the window open to see some sketchy artwork in action. But let's dig in to tonight's art stream, shall we? Let's take it on over to the big screen. Let me get my little tablet out here. There we go. No. There we go. There we go. That'll be what we're working on tonight. And let's just switch out the background audio here. For some of our little bossa nova favorites. No? Hold on. There we go. <laughs> Technical difficulties abound. All right, let's head on over to the screen, shall we? Here we go. Now, as I said, tonight we're going to be working on a jersey of sorts. We'll be tracing over most of the body, but we're going to have to separate it into a number of different parts. Left side, right side, and then different portions for the arms as well. One part that'll sit over top of our existing arms and one part that'll go underneath or behind, rather. Now, I was thinking of perhaps making a whole replacement model for the arms so that we don't have the regular jumpsuit underneath. Just uh, some skin tone arms. Let's see if we end up doing that or not. See how long it takes for us to get just the jersey itself roughed out and finished and working the way that I like it. That'll be the first thing that we work on. So let's head on over to Flash, which is where we do our sketching. And you can see here we've got all our constituent parts for the model all exploded out. We'll be using some of these as a guide. But we're also going to just copy what we got here. Do we have a nice reference model we can use here? We'll just flatten everything down. go and we'll just copy that into flash and make sure we undo that flatten oh Castelia has joined the space cadets 
For the longest time, I thought you were already watching the show, but thanks for tuning in. Nice to see you. I hope you're having a great evening. I wasn't following. See, I was, uh, I was sure that uh, we were following each other as well. But thanks for tuning in tonight. We're just doing a little <laughs> feel ashamed. No, no, no. No worries, no worries. We orbit in the same circles, of course. But we're just doing a little art stream tonight, working on the live 2D model, adding some new assets that we can use here on the channel. Now let me make sure that I undid what we did there. Is everything still separate here? Yeah, okay. We'll just make sure that we don't save this when we go and exit. Now let's pop back over to Flash, and we're going to open up a new file here. We'll paste in our reference. And let's just scale that down so we can work with it a little better. And let's start doing some sketching, shall we? Wonderful thing, of course, about vector line work is that everything is infinitely scalable. We can always make it bigger or smaller. The sky's the limit. All right, so let's go ahead and make this into a symbol so that we can change the opacity here. Okay, that's good, that's good. And we'll go ahead and make ourselves a new layer. We'll just call this sketch layer. We'll just call this reference layer. But how are you doing tonight, Castelia? Hope everything's going swell, going well for you. And we'll block this so that we don't accidentally mess something up. And now let's get to work on this jersey. So I'm thinking that it's going to be uh, a little bigger than the jumpsuit itself. You're doing great. How are we doing? We're doing just fine. We like these little art streams that we do from time to time. As I say, sort of two birds with one stone. We get to work on stuff for the channel. We get to do stuff that people are interested in seeing. Sort of a behind the scenes of how the show gets made. Now because we don't technically have a neck on this model. We are going to have to keep the collar in. Maybe that is something that I should work on on future streams, is trying to get a an underneath skin tone arms and neck and things like that so we can make more varied outfits. But for now, I suppose we'll just have the jersey sh sit uh, I guess it'll be layered underneath the, the collar something a little more visible here. Color blindness at play again. There we go, we can see that. And this will just be some quick rough work here. Now the way that we're going to separate this out, we're going to have, we want to tell that it's a jersey, so we're going to want to have a nice big neck to it. Then we're going to separate it out into two parts. We want, or are we? Now that I think about it, I guess my original idea was more like a, uh, like a referee's jersey, which sort of has the buttons down the middle. Yeah, sports jersey. We're making something that we can wear for our Rocket League streams. But we tend to do those pretty frequently on the weekends. I think we want it to be longer than the regular jumpsuit so nothing comes through. So maybe it will just be one piece for the shirt portion, and then we'll work on the arms. But we are going to have to separate any sort of like logo or stripes or things like that that we want to add to it because when the model moves back and forth, left and right, that sort of thing, these are going to move in a sort of parallax effect, giving us that simulation of 3D movement. Okay, so... But if we wanted to, we could sort of separate it down the middle. I don't think that we're going to have to. It might be wise, however, to try to isolate basically this portion here, this top part, so that we can better skew the angle 
of the V around the neck. You gotta be forward thinking when you're working with uh, live 2D. That's for certain. Hero King, hi, 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 hi. Hope you're having a great evening. Thanks for tuning in. A wonderful friend of the show, Hero King Soul. I hope things are going right for you tonight. You're tuned in for another Vector Spaceman art stream. We're working on just the rough sketching right now for a sports jersey outfit that we're working on. Of course, nothing symmetrical. We want it to look perfectly imperfect. Hero says, I'm finished the roach drawing real quick. <laughs> nice. Going to be posting that to Twitter. Can't wait to see it. Actually, I didn't notice. Did you post your uh, Manayu fan art to uh, Twitter as well? Hero King, a wonderful and appreciative viewer and also artist who's been making some very nice drawings of our fellow, how you say, virtual streamers. Yes, I did, but I don't think we are following each other. Oh, is that right? That doesn't seem right. If that's not the case, then it's something that we'll make sure to remedy. That's for sure, that's for sure. Now, I need some reference for sports jerseys. Let's pull up a reference sheet here. And really what we're trying to capture is like a soccer jersey. Some examples here that we can work from. Whoop. What do we like the look of? Ooh, I like this sort of design that's sort of solid and then it's got stripes on it. See, problem is I don't really follow <laughs> soccer that much. Ooh, and I like having the different colored sleeves. Maybe we'll do... We're not going to do orange because that's just going to clash with the jumpsuit that's going to have to stay underneath for now. So we'll probably do a blue colored jersey. You know how I'm going to separate it? I just thought of how I'm going to separate it. We're going to make the V-neck its own asset. So that'll be one part. The jersey underneath will be a second part. The arms will be their own part. And that should allow us to skew it nice. And then any sort of decal or effect like a logo or something like that, that'll be its own part as well. That'll work, that'll work. Alright, so we're gonna need a number of layers for that then. How do... Team logos tend to work. Ooh, we could even put a number on there, that, that would be nice. Looks like team logos. I guess there's no real set in stone way to do it. But we're gonna wanna make sort of like a faux Rocket League logo on one of the chest sides. Some sort of crest. Could around say the shoulders or something make it a separate color and then can we do something down around the waist maybe another band of color something like that or maybe a couple we do one and then we could do are a little thick, but nah, not loving that. 
some inspiration here. Who's got good designs? Who's got good team jersey designs? What program is this? This is Adobe Flash. The same program that I use for all of my model work here. Technically not a dedicated illustration program, but it's what was used for way, way, way back in the day when we used to do web animation and uh, stuff like that. It's a... Uh, I mean, it's capable of being a illustration program if you know what you're doing, but there's definitely newer and better uh, software. See, I really like stripes and things like that, but uh, that's going to be more and more difficult to animate once we get this into live 2D. So we may just go with a little band of color around the bottom. And then the arms themselves. So they're going to have to be bigger like this, and we're going to want them to arc around the jersey, which means we're going to need a separate piece that goes behind that acts as sort of like a shadow. But then basically I'm thinking we'll have a nice uh, sort of mid-tone blue for the base color. white maybe white for the arms as well and then whatever color the crest ends up being oh hey look at this we got a bunch of action in the chat that, that we missed here Ellie of the Nova Swarm Hiya Space Band hey Ellie Hope things are going well for you tonight. Thanks for tuning in to our art stream. We're making some more channel assets for the Spaceman model. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday evening. Tonight we're working on a sort of faux soccer jersey that we can put on the model. Yeah, when we're playing Rocket League, exactly. <laughs> Ellie knows what we're about. Ellie's been tuning into the Rocket League streams every now and then. So we're just sketching out what might be good designs at the moment. Looking at existing soccer jerseys for some reference, some inspiration. I really, really like this design here. It's sort of got the solid tones and then separates into the stripes and checker patterns, those are nice too. Problem is, the more stuff like that we add, the more layers we have to separate once we get it into Live 2D. Makes it a little more difficult to work with, but if we really wanted to, we could probably get away with like, something like this, this will show up better once I color it proper. Something like two big stripes. And then we could change the... the blue to be a little darker maybe or something. Nah, that looks a little too messy. Problem is I don't want to use too much orange because the rest of the model is super orange, which is why we're going for the blue jersey. We really run out of uh, color options, unfortunately. And of course, we got to think ahead about how we want to separate all of the different uh, parts of the model so that when we get into Live 2D, we can animate it nice and smooth for when we move around. All right, let me go ahead and save this real quick so that I don't forget to do that later, so that we don't lose all of our work down the line. And we'll call this 
Jersey. There we go. All right, so what we'll ultimately do is we'll blow up the size of the crest. Maybe we could... I'm just thinking maybe we could put a number or something onto it. Usually you see those on the back of jerseys, but... And of course, we're also going to have to be forward thinking about adding uh, shadows and whatnot. We'll want to put a little bit on the shoulders as well as some on the side of the arms once we get to that. All right, let's start building our different pieces here. So that's our sketch layer. Let's start. Hero King actually posted my other characters on Twitter now. All right, we're going to check that out later tonight. Once we get to making sure that we're following you, first of all. Alright, let's make a little layer here, and we'll call this base, because this is going to be the largest part of the jersey. And this is going to cover everything on the... the chest here, except for the collar and the emblem, the badge. All right, so this will ultimately end up being a black outline. thing about Flash is that line strength actually scales with how zoomed in you are, which is bizarre, but whatever. We'll deal with it. <laughs> so basically, we're going to want to go just shy of the neckline so that the eventual collar piece can sit right on top of it. Feels like it's smoothing these lines a little too much. Process is really sketch a lot, clean up at the end. Football, football, yeah, football. Making us look like we've got a little extra girth around the midsection. Spaceman's got to work out some, work off some of this excess Christmas weight. Also include a little color band around the bottom. And we don't want anything to be perfectly symmetrical because everything on our model has to look perfectly imperfect. There we go, nice and scuffed looking. And we just clean up where we have to. Oh! Lock that sketch layer so that we're not interfering with that. Okay, and just fill out a little more detail here. We want this to be about up here. It's all said and done. Now 
Now it looks like we're getting some connection issues. Are you guys having trouble seeing or hearing us at all? It looks like it keeps jumping between middling and decent connection, so if we're having connection issues, let me know and I'll try to get that sorted out. Nope, good for you? All right. Stuttered for a second, but it's fine now. Castelia, I did just once, so I'm behind a tad. Probably bad connection on it. No, I think it's probably us, but as long as it's not brutal, we should be all right. Now this neckline here won't really be seen because it'll get covered up by our secondary neckline layer, collar layer. Just want it to serve as a a demarcation line, as it were, between layers. Check it out, it's Dragon Durant of the Asahiro 0088. Typical space things, how's it going? What's happening all? Good to see you, Dragon. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a great day, great evening. A lovely Thursday art stream today. Chit-chatting with some space cadets and working on new outfits for the live 2D model. Right now we're putting together sort of a sports jersey that we can pop on when we're doing games like Rocket League and stuff like that. things with you sir great to see you hope everything's going well when you're a perfectionist, but you're also trying to make sure that your stuff doesn't look too perfect. Or rather, you're trying to capture a perfectly imperfect style. This is the struggle of trying to keep with this sketchy mid-2000s web aesthetic. <laughs> Alright, so... This is going to be, oh, I guess we should add the sort of shoulder element here. This will be part of the base model as well. So we'll connect all the way over to the side. Likewise over here. So that becomes full color. This becomes just a base white. down here. Alright, so that's the first part of our jersey done. Scuffed with style, lovely. <laughs> exactly. Perfectly imperfect. Castelia says, speaking of typical space things, I feel like I never get to tell this story, but I crashed into the moon once. Alright, go on. Tell this story. I'm intrigued. You have our attention. The class is listening. The floor is yours. <laughs> Let me take a quick drink here. There we go. All right, I'm all ears. Or eyeballs, technically, since we're reading this via chat. So this one time, yep, as all good stories begin, at space camp. <laughs> While 
you tell us, while you regale us with this story, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer for our collar. My team wasn't great at following the script, and I'm pretty sure time, like, jumped and we crashed into the moon. Typical. Ain't that the way it always goes, huh? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna do this in a different color so it's easier for me to see. And then I'm gonna switch back to it. To a black. Oh, can't see that. Oh. Colorblind space man. There we go. We were the only moon landing sim group that failed. Oh no. That's got a sting. So it was just a, a glitch or something. You said time jumped, so next thing you know, you're crashing into the lunar surface. Dragon with the puns, not a smashing success. <laughs> you know we appreciate bad jokes here on the show. Something like that, I don't even know, man. Everything got kind of fuzzy after we hit the moon. Well, I imagine that it would. <laughs> All things considered, that's kind of the way it goes, right? some of these lines here. to a space camp or anything like that or any sort of like themed summer camp when I was growing up now that I think about it I think the one that always sounded coolest was I had a friend who went to like a some sort of computer science summer camp or something like that where they got to work on game design and uh and programming, things like that. That always sound fun to me. It was pretty fun. I got a cool keychain of Saturn. <laughs> That's cool. That's got to be the hardest keychain to make. You got to find a way to attach the little rings. Saturn's a pretty cool planet. I'm pretty pro Saturn. I don't know what your beef with Jupiter was, Castelia, when we were posting space facts the other uh, the other week. <laughs> you got some issue with the with the big gas giant, it seems.
you do have beef with Jupiter. All right, T tell him why you're mad, son. Tell him why you're mad, son. Let's hear it. <laughs> Jupiter badge. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen such vitriol against a planet. <laughs> Jupiter scary? Why is Jupiter scary? It's just a big ball of gas with a imperceptible surface and a never-ending cycle of storms. What's so spooky about that, you know? <laughs> you could fall straight through it, kinda, and die like three or four times over. Pretty sure you only get one go at it. <laughs> But technically, you wouldn't fall straight through it, because the pressure down there would just pulverize you before you even hit the core, I'm pretty sure. I remember reading a, uh, a science fiction novel when I was younger called A Gift from Earth, which was... Ooh, is that Larry Niven? Let me look that up. It was part of the... that up. A gift from Earth. Novel. Larry Nevin. Yep, that's right. And the idea was it's about these colonists on a alien planet and it's a largely gaseous planet. And it, it talked about uh, sort of a, a unique way of suicide that had uh, sprouted up amongst the colonists, which was basically just jumping into the core of the planet and you just fall and fall until the heat and the pressure builds up and just takes you out i remember thinking "Ooh." hey now why did that happen <laughs> i don't know what hotkey we hit there by accident but the show's not over folks <laughs> Castellia says, it could eat our planet whole, and I'm pretty sure I read that it kicked another planet out of the solar system. Oh, so it's a bully. That's what you don't like about it. <laughs> See, how is that not super spooky? Oh no, I kind of I kind of admire big gas planets. They've got charm, I don't know getting heat smooshed is scary. I don't know, it might be a pleasant way to go, all things considered. You know, kind of like jumping into a black hole sort of thing. Getting spaghettified. <laughs> How do you feel about black holes, Castelia? Let us know. Same beef? <laughs> Jupiter may be stupider, but it gives the best hugs. That's right. It just wants to, uh, to wrap you up in its warm, Crushing embrace. <laughs> Plus, I'm pretty sure Jupiter's got some of the best contenders in its uh, satellites, in its moons, for space colonization sort of thing. Moons like uh, like Ganymede, which are like not quite Earth size, but big enough that uh, like the gravity would still be weird, but and it's super cold still, so you'd have to get some work done. <laughs> no, its hugs are scary, and I don't want to be spaghetti either, but I like spaghetti more than Jupiter. Black holes are also scary, but significantly cooler. Okay. At least there's some method to your madness here. <laughs> We're hitting at the core of the reasoning. Also, no, I'm not going to orbit Jupiter. You'd have to look at Jupiter every day, see it there, just glaring at you. 
big red storm on the surface looking at you like a big giant red eyeball staring you down menacingly. <laughs> Did anybody else see that freeze? Did we lose uh, frames there? Hero King says, Okay, finish posting all my character art and my Twitter is the same as my Twitch username. No, I definitely know that we've seen you on Twitter. If we're not following you, we'll get that remedied after the show tonight. But I'll definitely check those out. Thanks, Hero. Okay, so the collar will move independently of the body, which will allow us to simulate 3D motion as the body moves left and right and up and down. <laughs> Castelia, yeah, see, I don't want its menacing red storm to look at me while I sleep. That would be kind of freaky, though, wouldn't it? You wake up in the middle of the night, you look out the window... There's that enormous, all-consuming red spot just glaring at you. And that's a thing too, it's a lot different when you're... Because you, uh, you can't live on Jupiter, you'd have to live on one of the moons. So you'd be looking at that thing and it's huge. Like, would you be able to see anything other than Jupiter? Well, you'd still be able to see stars and stuff. And maybe some other orbiting bodies. Is Jupiter just the sky? No, no, no. It wouldn't be that bad. I don't think it's that close. Oh, heroes have to take a quick shower. Stay safe. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty. Now, let's start working on that Rocket logo, Rocket League logo. Or is that going to come back to bite me in the end? If we want to use this for stuff that's beyond just Rocket League. But right now it really is designed as a Rocket League logo because we don't play any other sports games, do we? So maybe we can just go with something that suggests Rocket League. Sports ball, exactly. <laughs> I think the only time that I've ever played, like, sports games, really, has been Rocket League, which is technically not really sport, but just, uh, emulates sport. Oh dear, did I just... Oh no. I messed up here. Let's see. Select everything. Yeah, here we go. Delete this. We want stuff on the correct layer. Okay, lock that. Make everything visible again. Working on the base layer. Here we go. Let me clean up some of these small details. There we go. But Rocket League and then... Pretty sure I played like... One year's edition of Madden Football like one NHL game for the old original Xbox. I think that was about it though. I was never into sports games, sports video games. I didn't really have any friends who were into it either. Oh, you know what was the best sports game? Were those uh, golfing games that you could sometimes find at like uh, bars and stuff? With the big uh, like round spherical wheel thing in the middle that you'd pull back and let go to 
to, to charge up your swing. It was like an arcade game. What was that called? What was that called? Golf arcade game. Something links. Golf, golf, not gold arcade game, golf arcade game. Why does the internet not know what I'm talking about instinctively? Come on. Golden tea, that's what it was. These bad boys. And they had the big old wheel in the center here. You'd have to swing it back, then swing it forward. That's what I'm remembering. That was the only sports game I ever had fun with. <laughs> I think I remember that golf game at the bowling alley. Yeah, that's the sort of place where you'd see it, right? Bars, bowling alleys, movie theaters, maybe. I don't know what it is, for some reason, ugh. We've been hitting hotkeys that we shouldn't be tonight. I keep switching scenes. I was a bit too short then. <laughs> you gotta get that box, that crate to stand on or something. keep switching scenes tonight. I'd just be hitting key presses here that for some reason OBS is interpreting as change the scene commands, which they shouldn't be. So I'm pretty sure I don't have the scene change commands linked to actual hotkeys. I'm pretty sure it's just all worked into the little sideboard stream deck dealio that I got here. Technical difficulties. Alright, now what were we working on? We were working on the crest. Let's go ahead and make another layer here then. And we'll save for good measure. Let me go and pull up the Rocket League logo, see what I can find here. Okay, so here we go. Rocket League does actually have could work as like a crest. Let me paste it in here on the reference layer. Go ahead and import. An important importation. Not responding. Good thing we save. There we go. that down. Alright, so if we just trace over this a bit, make it look a little scuffy, that might work for us. Castellia says, my favorite arcade game is Mappy. What was Mappy? I don't remember that one. Let me look that up. Arcade game. Mappy. Oh. Getting a lot of results here. I've never even heard of this. It's like a mouse and a cat. And 
Dragon says, I miss arcade centers. Most seem pretty run down nowadays. Time Crisis 2 and 3 was my jam. Why does every arcade center have a copy of Time Crisis 2? What is with that? It's absolutely true. Because it was the best. So my favorite, Time Crisis was one of my faves. My favorite was a game called Lucky and Wild. And it was a co-op uh, light gun game where one person had to drive a, a car and the other person had uh, a light gun. And technically both of them had a light gun, but one of them was responsible for driving a car as well. And you, it, it was like a like a lethal weapon rip-off kind of thing, or like a, you know, 80s action movie sort of style. But I really liked it because me and my friend, we could have one of us at the wheel, and if we really wanted to, the other guy could take both light guns and just go at it. There was a cooperative element to it. I always remembered that one. But yeah, Time Crisis was pretty slick. <laughs> no denying that. It just, it just always struck me that, you know, that was a truism. If you were going to a, a movie theater or a bowling alley or something like that where there was a arcade section, a little arcade center, then you knew you were gonna see, you were gonna see like a, like a deer hunt cabinet. You were gonna see probably an air hockey table. You were gonna see a copy of, you, you were gonna see some kind of driving game. Maybe if it was one of the really cool places, it would be one of the ones that was on, like, a, a motorcycle. And it had the thing that you lean on. And then, of course, you'd always have a Time Crisis 2. Or 3, if they were up to date. Depends if they'd fallen on hard times or not. <laughs> I sometimes hit up the local Japanese arcade. So Japanese arcades are, are next level. That's legit. Gotta love me some rhythm games. Are you located in Japan, Castelia? Or you just have a Japanese-style arcade center near you? Gotta love some rhythm games and skee-ball. Yeah, we love skee-ball. Oh, you live near a round one, okay. Fancy arcade centers. Chew Beat and Groove Coaster are my favorite arcade rhythm games. So when I was living in Japan, I really liked the, the taiko drumming rhythm arcade games. But yeah, there are people over there that take arcade gaming to new extremes. That's faux show. The guys who post up at the uh, at the fighting game stations and just take on all comers. The middle school and high school kids who rock up and jam out at the music and rhythm games. The salary men on their way home. It's a place for everyone. <laughs> oh, Dragon's taking off. Take it easy, Spaceman and everyone. We'll talk to you later, Dragon. Have a good evening. Thanks for dropping by. Hope to see you again soon. Castelia says we also have a video game store with a bunch of Japanese rhythm arcade games. Ah. Which is like 10 bucks for four hours or so of unlimited access. That's not so bad. That's not bad at all. I'm a fan of Waka and Project Diva Arcade myself. 
That's <laughs> as Ellie says. Ah, a washing machine enjoyer, I see. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that one. Is that one of the ones that, uh, with the big circular screen then? Is that what we're referring to? Yeah, a touchscreen rhythm game. They look like this. Ellie's posted a link. Let me open it up here. Okay, yeah, whoa! That's even wilder than some of the ones I've seen before. For anybody else not in the know, check it out there. Waka. That looks fun. <laughs> save there we go I took chat's advice we went and added a redeem code under the channel points for save your work spaceman <laughs> so if we end up going too long without remembering to do that be sure to remind me cadets we don't want to have a repeat of one of our earlier catastrophes where we had to redo all of our color work <laughs> also, Lamb did the art. Lamb is one of my favorite artists. Ah. A connoisseur, I see. favorite games that the series has just sort of died off. It hasn't had a new release in quite a while now. Is the uh, the Rock Band series of games, of rhythm games. With the guitar and drum peripherals and everything like that. I always thought that was a really, really cool series. But you know what? I went and I looked up what that series has been up to not too long ago and they like still continually release new downloadable tracks for that game like every week like as recently as this year they're still out there supporting it but I haven't seen a new release from uh, from that or from Guitar Hero or anything like that in quite a while I've still got an old plastic good plastic guitar kicking around somewhere I think that was probably the biggest barrier to entry, was having to get that big old guitar peripheral. <laughs> Ellie! Used to love rock band, right? Talk about a perfect reason to get friends together. That was one of the greatest, not really couch co-op, but local co-op games that you could do with friends. Guitar Hero Live, not your favorite? Don't remember that one. I think as soon as Rock Band came out, I switched from Guitar Hero to Rock Band. Because you could start to uh, customize in your, your character, you could put together a band, you could make yourself your own logo. It was really cool. Rock Band's the reason why I know the lyrics to Welcome to the Black Parade by heart. Okay.
Still haven't learned the lyrics to that one. I know everybody was requesting it when we did our karaoke stream. <laughs> we wanted mid-2000s emo music. <laughs> and we just couldn't deliver. That's one I'm going to have to learn for next time. I always like rock band because of all the 60s, 70s rock tracks that they'd stick in there. That was my jam growing up with oldies radio and stuff. A spaceman out of his time period. like a scuffy looking car in the center of it? I think so. So how are we going to do that? Let me just save first. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make a new layer. Temporary layer. Make a very visible color, something that I can see here, and we're basically just going to fill in the outlines here. So that it looks vaguely like what it's supposed to from a distance. solid color white once we're done with it. Estelle says rock may have been the nest in the 80s, or the best in the 80s, but pop was good in the late 2000s, early 2010s. I think you're right. I'm not going to deny that. There's definitely a few songs that'll be forever stuck in my brain, in my space brain. Thanks to that era. And of course, late 2000s, early 2010s, that's the era that we grew up in, really, so... Yeah, I got what you meant. <laughs> I figured that's what you meant. visible for me here. Oh, what's going on here? Hero's back? Party Rock Anthem still gets you hyped. Yo, every day we'd be shuffling though. Come on. Starships. Yep. Happy birthday, Liz. What's this about, Hero? What are we missing here?
Castellia's dog. Oh, really? It's your dog's birthday, Castellia? Well, be sure to give her lots of hugs and pats on the head from us, from everybody here at the station. Forgot to get her a pup cake. <laughs> I suppose dogs don't really know when it's their birthday. But it's a thought that counts. I'm, right now I'm trying to figure out how to draw that little bean dog. What, uh, what uh, is the, uh, the breed? Ah, Shih Tzu's. Okay. I posted some of her greatest pics earlier, little bean dog pics. <laughs> we'll have to check that out. Way in, Space Cadets. Are you cat people or are you dog people? Maybe we shouldn't pick favorites, you know, but... I know for some people they're... on one side of the, uh, one side of the aisle versus the other. I never had any pets growing up, but I always preferred dogs. Just friendlier. Hero's pro dog. <laughs> He's on team dog. Oh, you got two huskies. Wow. I had a friend who had a husky growing up. My understanding is that they're incredible howlers. <laughs> Castelli says, I'm allergic to both. Oh. But there seem to be more hypoallergenic dog breeds and cats. Cats are real cute, though. Well, technically, there's, uh, what, those sphinx cats, the ones without any hair? They'd be hypoallergenic, right? <laughs> if they have absolutely no dander. Not a big fan of the hairless cats, Hero. And huskies being high maintenance? Yeah, that's what I've heard. I guess it's better to have a pair of them, though, than to have just one who will get lonely and rip up the house, that sort of thing. Oh, you've met one of those hairless cats in person. Are they weird? Like... Are they completely hairless, or do they have, like, a fine layer of hair underneath or something? That's what I've wondered.
Oh, they're outside. We built them a separate house. That's wise. For the huskies. Castellia, this dog's been asleep all stream. Shih Tzu's are low maintenance, I guess. Oh, here is talking about the hairless cats. They are completely hairless and love to rub on people. <laughs> Made me gag. Ugh. Cat tongues are rough. Yeah, cat tongues have like, uh... Like, almost like Velcro-like, uh barbs on them, if I'm not mistaken, is why they feel so weird, so rough, because they're always using them to clean themselves, stuff like that, scrubbing themselves with their tongue. All right, let's pull some color off of this here. <laughs> She's looking at me. She knows you're talking about her. Talking smack. No, talking all the benefits of being a low-maintenance Shih Tzu dog. Hero says, I need me security dog. Well, Huskies, I imagine, would fit the bill for that. bark at just about everything. like it'll work pretty well for our chest crest. We'll slap, well, we'll scale that, but we'll slap that on. Just go and make that its own symbol there. and easy on the chest. Rotate a bit. Decent. Extra decent. Tell you, I have this tendency to look at her and go, Izzy, you're a dog. Stating the obvious, I guess. <laughs> now that this is sized properly, now I want to just thicken the line work on it a bit before we move on. 
Hero says, no, my sister has a small dog in the house that I... Oh, that I bought a security jacket for. Oh, I see what you mean. Just to make him seem extra tough and imposing. <laughs> I think I saw something on Twitter or some other site. It was a picture of a dog that had gotten an honorary master's degree. It was like a service dog. <laughs> an honorary master's in like uh, occupational therapy or, or something like that. After uh, attending school for so many years with its... Uh, with its human that it was working as a service animal for. I like feel-good stories like that. Why does it feel like I don't have pressure sensitivity on? It's hilarious because he sleeps all day. The security dock? Sleeping on the job? Man. Somebody should be docking his pay. Talk to the higher-ups. Get him written up. Say, sir, I want to speak to your manager. Pets I had growing up were some fish, occasionally. So if I ever needed my dog or cat fix, I'd it'd always be going over to friends' houses. <laughs> Fishies, yes. Yo, I've got a friend right now who I'm pretty sure has had the same fish, same goldfish, for close to 10 years. Like, it is an extremely long livid fish. Though, to be fair, they say it's the same fish. I've got no, no real way to confirm that information. Is it a koi? I'm not sure. It's not huge. Koi, when I think of koi, like I think of fish that like take up a whole aquarium almost, like the kind of fish that you see in like a hotel lobby or something. <laughs> like big fish enclosures. No, this is like a, just like a little goldfish that you'd keep in a tank. Though I guess goldfish and koi, they sort of grow to their environment, right? So maybe it is a koi, I don't know. I should inquire about this. says I'll wake him up 
and go like, let's go do some rounds and walk around the house. Everyone in the family laughed when they saw him put uh, pull up the sweater, <laughs> pull up with the sweater and with the hoodie on. Oh, it's got a hoodie too. He can't see anything and just stands there. Not, uh, not the greatest security guard then, is he? All right, I'm pretty pleased with that crest. If you take care of a goldfish, they can live a very long time, so maybe it is the same goldfish. Maybe I'm not being bamboozled. do shadow work in Photoshop since it's a lot easier to work with the layers in there. They can, but you have to be very caring. Well, I can imagine this person being very caring with a goldfish. All right, base jersey done. We've got a separate layer for the collar. We've got a separate layer for the crest. So that'll all be easy to manipulate in Live 2D. Now we've got to work on the arms. And the arms are also going to be split into two parts since they're going to be angled to show the curvature of the sleeve. 10 to 15 year lifespan. Some varieties can live up to 30 with proper care. Jeez. And this is an animal that basically does nothing. It just swims around, eats. Maybe that's the key to longevity. Swim around, eat, basically do nothing. I guess we could all learn a little from the humble goldfish. <laughs> Just copy in the actual arm pieces that we use so I can use them for proper proper reference don't need this right now don't need that right now sure that I cover them up entirely and let's go ahead and we'll hide our reference layer well, oh nope need those back first this and this thank you okay hide the reference layer put these on a separate layer there we go Tell you telling us to save our work. Very good. Thanks for the reminder. I should add an audio cue to that as well, so I notice it a lot sooner. All right, now we don't need most of this sketch layer at this point, so let's erase and start working on the... proper. So 
want to make sure it covers the whole thing. And then we're going to be separating each into two pieces. Do we want to pull it up a little bit? We may want to. sure that some of the arm pokes through. We can tell that it's a sleeve. And then the second part will basically just be an oval underneath, shaded slightly to represent uh, the back half of the sleeve. Basically mirror the design over here. Again, nothing in this model is perfectly symmetrical. Looking at the time here, we may not get everything done today. May just get all the layer work done and I'll have to do the rigging in my spare time. But I think we've done good tonight, Space Cadets. I've gotten most of my vision roughed out at the very least, at the very least. Is your jumpsuit staying on underneath? For now, yeah. See, I was thinking of maybe uh, what, we, what we would have to do because the model itself has no neck. The neck is all hidden underneath the uh, the collar pieces. You never see it, no matter how how far the head moves around. You never see the neck. So we can't get rid of the collar without creating completely new assets for the base model. And same goes for the arms. Like, there's no skin underneath the... Let's see, if we pull up the, the base model here, if we remove the tablet, you can see in just the idle pose, there's no skin underneath the the gloves or attached to the arms or anything like that so eventually what I, what I would like to do is make a sleeveless flesh tone model as well as well as a proper neck and maybe even a, a chest as well because then we could do uh, additional outfit ideas that involve showing certain parts of the body that are presently covered up it would be cute if you put the zipper over the jersey maybe we could do that we could make that work how do we have it set up right now? Base goes over like that. Yeah, we could put it between... So the collar is going to be like that. Yeah, we could technically still have the zipper poking over. We'll see it regardless, but we could have it hanging over the top. We could work that into it. That's no problem. down a bit. Come out more about there. This one seems fine. As long as it's covering up the base model entirely, that's fine. You know, it's like when we were doing the the mitten hands and stuff like that. What did we assign that to? Was it H? No, H is headless model, or head only model. Was it... Oh, that's rough. Now I can't remember what our our hotkey for the holiday model was. This is what we were working on last time was the, the popcorn model for when we're doing watch-alongs or stuff like that. That turned out all right, but I'm thinking maybe what I'd like to do in the future is change it a little bit since most of the base model gets cut off 
You can't see a whole lot of it. Maybe if we scale down the popcorn, put it in one hand, and maybe in the other hand put like a drink or something like that. I was thinking that might be a better way to to do the, the snacking outfit. Oh, now I remember what it was. There's the holiday outfit. <laughs> so we're going to run out of key combinations that we can reliably press. We'll make it work, though. <laughs> So these will mitten spaceman. Yes, actually we can even do mittens while we're working on the <laughs> while we're working on the tablet. Here is going to find something to eat. All right, stay safe. Fly safe, space cadet. We'll see you again when we see you. And if you've got any extras, hey, why not share some with the class? Yeah, we made mittens for all of the existing hand models that we had at the time. So everything except the the popcorn model. So we got mittens for the tablet. We got idle mittens. We've got gaming mittens. I don't know how that works, but it uh, we make it work. And we've got singing mittens as well. <laughs> if we were to bust some rhymes out off the dome. But that's a hol the holiday outfit. We're a little past that at this point but it'll always be there ready to go when the weather gets bad or the holidays roll around again. All right, so these will become black outlines and the interiors will be white, I believe. Let's clean up some of that. Thicken that side there. And then the other side, the underside, will be just a slight gray tone. thing about working with the Spaceman model is that it's so simple to make new content for it. Given how scuffed up it's always been intended to look. See, that's the secret there. Aspiring virtual streamers, VTubers, and what have you. See, if you can just convince people that it's supposed to look sketchy, then you can get away with anything. <laughs> Waiting to see an influx of stick figure VTubers. <laughs> Scuffed is my middle name, says Castelia. That's a spirit. Castelia Scuffed VTube. Tubers as a new VTuber genre if they don't already exist. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a stick figure as an artistic medium. You know, we got to put respect on that uh, linear minimalism, as it as it were. Tis a noble tradition dating back to caveman times. You gotta give it up to people who are keeping those artistic traditions alive. Taking them to new heights. If 
I've spoken before on stream about what a fan I used to be of, uh... Well, I guess I am still a fan of them, but, uh, webcomics? Back when they were at their height... ...on the internet. And you used to see a lot of... ...sprite comics back in the day, real easy to produce. Basically just rip sprite sheets from games, or... Mostly from games, I suppose, or, or any other sort of... ...sprite-based work, and use it as your own. Make slight alterations here and there. And I really like the, uh... There are a few sprite tubers. Or pixel tubers, as, uh, I guess is the... The proper term, or not proper term, but more common term for them. And doing pixel art is a lot harder than you'd imagine. Gotta give it up for them. Gotta give them respect. Homestuck, yeah, right? The independent stuff, like that. Those were the real OGs. Of Sprite Comics, the ones who made everything up, uh, original. Oh, Hero's back with a waffle. <laughs> what do you think of Spider-Gwen? Wasn't she... Like, I feel like Gwen Stacy was already a superhero, or already had a super alter ego before all the Spider-Gwen stuff. And what was it? It was some sort of... Because I remember reading a comic. Gwen Stacy, Spider-Man... Superhero, heroine, if you will. Obviously, she was always in Spider-Man, but, uh... Why do I feel like I read something where she had... ...some other super alter ego? Or am I thinking of Barbara Gordon? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. From DC. Hmm. I might be getting the two mixed up. Is Emma Stone coming back to be Spider-Gwen? Oh, is that right? It might be in The Amazing Spider-Man 3. They're making an Amazing Spider-Man 3? Because Andrew Garfield was given a new contract for three more movies? What? I don't even think I saw Amazing Spider-Man 2. I saw the first one. With the Lizard Man. I thought, all right, this is fine, but it's no Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. You know, that was always my favorite. And then I, you know, I came to like that other fellow. What's his name? Tom Holland. As the MCU Spider-Man. I thought we were done with Andrew Garfield. Hmm. Yeah, it's what I've seen in the Spider-Man news. You've been surfing the spider webs, as it were. Well, how would that work, then? Because in Amazing Spider-Man universe, Peter Parker's Spider-Man, so is there still a Spider-Gwen? Oh, maybe there is, because even in... 
the other spider universes. There's Spider-Man and Spider-Gwen at the same time. Yeah, I can see it working. How old is Emma Stone now, though? How old is Andrew Garfield now, though? Definitely not teenage Peter Parker age. <laughs> I feel like I spoiled something for you. Different universe Spider-Gwen. I still haven't seen the latest uh, Spider-Man film. What is it called? The uh, No Way Home? No, what was it? Homecoming, then Far From Home, and now... Hey! Castelia is a certified space ace. Castelia, thank you so much. Get out of town. What are you doing? Subscribing to the channel like this. Don't go throwing your money at some... That's some sketchy Spaceman's channel. Come on now. You just wanted to see your name up on the board, didn't you? Get that, uh, get that founder badge. <laughs> I think we've got one or two of those left. And you know what? You're reminding me now. I don't have my uh, stream labels open. <laughs> I gotta open that up so that we update the leaderboard up top. We'll see Castelia's name as our latest space ace. <laughs> you like space! There it is. Well, thanks so much for that, Castelia. We love having you here. Thanks so much for support. Look at that! Latest follower and latest space ace at the same time. I think you're the first person who's occupied both rolls at once. <laughs> Anyhow, I gotta go wake up early, which means I gotta go to... Well, thanks for tuning in while you did, Castelia. Tell you what, we're not gonna... Just for you, we're gonna abstain from any more Jupiter-heavy content for a little while. Just to, just to keep your mind at ease. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great night. See you later, Castelia. I hope we see you again soon. Take care. Have a great night. We'll see you when we see you. <laughs> Thanks for the stream, no problem. Our pleasure. Thanks for tuning in. Heroes over here still talking boot. Still talking about Spider-Man. So his second movie is definitely good to be honest. The only thing I remember about the second movie, because I didn't see it, but I remember seeing trailers and stuff for it, was that they had Paul Giamatti playing the Rhino. Does he feature heavily in that movie? Because <laughs> what's his name? Jamie Foxx plays Electro, right? You're right about that. The fights in Amazing Spider-Man are very cool in my opinion. The only problem with the second movie is that they made Electro blue. What color is Electro usually? Yellow? Like, maybe 15 minutes only? Okay. He made it into the trailers. <laughs> so we're gonna rename this sketch layer to be... Arms. And we want a layer underneath called... Arms Backside. Basically just want to make a oval that'll cover up the back. We'll fill it in with a a nice darker gray sort of color. Yeah, green and yellow. Okay, I see. In the beginning of the movie, he was just a typical bad guy. At the end, he got the suit on. Oh, I see.
something like that. Nice steady hands. We try, we try. And even if we make mistakes, there's always Control Z. Speaking of which, Control S, remember to save everybody. And now we'll just go for a slightly darker. There we go. Fill that in. And when we layer our reference where it ought to be. Something like that. We would see... Oh, whoop. Oh, that's why it didn't work. There, that's about how it would look in practice. With the little arm nubs sticking out and then covered up by the forearms, everything will look pretty slick. But they changed his suit from the second movie, so in the first and second movie he got different suits. Who, Spider-Man? Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man? Or Electro? He wasn't in the first one, was he? Do kind of yeah, Spider-Man. Okay, that's what I thought you meant. I definitely still want to see this latest Tom Holland Spider-Man though, the No Way Home one. So I don't think it's any spoilers that it's got all sorts of fan favorites from previous Spiders men who show up and show out. Some sort of weird, looks like some sort of multiverse dealio. Electro was brought back in No Way Home. He's not blue there. Oh. Looks so awesome if you've seen the trailer. I don't remember seeing him in the trailer. I just remember seeing Green Goblin and uh, Doc Ock. sure if I'll catch that in theaters or if I'll just have to wait for it to come out on video or something. Somewhere I can rent it. Disney Plus or something like that. See, I'm pro going to the theater and stuff like that, but it can be hard to convince some of my friends to uh, go out and do stuff. You know, some people are more cautious than others these days. You gotta stay safe out there, Space Cadets. Fandango is the one that'll get it first? All right. That seals it then. Thanks for the hot tip.
And there it is, Space Cadets. A perfectly functional Spaceman sports jersey. So we'll layer that under the collar, and we can also place the... We should be able to place the zipper on top of it as well, if I'm not mistaken. The way we have it set up in Live 2D, we should be able to make that work. And then because we have the collar separate on its own, we'll be able to skew that independently as the shirt moves side to side so we can simulate motion like we have here with the regular model. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Let me just go ahead and let's see, make sure everything is selectable here. We can get rid of our reference models. We can get rid of our arms here. Let me copy everything. Or you know what? We're not going to do that. We are going to make sure that everything is its own symbol. So that we can copy and separate more easily. There we go. Forward thinking, spaceman. Select everything but that. There we go. Oops. And what was this layer? Arms backside. That's right. Okay, so now we can copy everything, everything. There. Onto this finished product layer, all in one go, and we can separate it out into its individual layers. That'll make it easier for when we take it into Photoshop. Sort of like the way that we have the exploded view of the base model here. Gotta separate everything out beforehand. And then we'll also work on shading in Photoshop as well. But that'll be a job for another day, I think, Space Cadets. I'm happy with what we got done here, but I think we're gonna call the stream there for the evening. We had a good couple hours of nice chit-chat, relaxing time with the Space Cadets who tuned in tonight. I want to thank everybody who's been here. Take a look at the Ooh, chat list here. We got a lot of people who've tuned in. A lot of bots, a lot of space cadets. You know we love to see everybody who tunes in. Big shoutouts, of course, to Hero King. And to Ellie. And to Castelia. Special thanks to Castelia, who became one of our very latest certified space aces. Subscribers to the channel here. Make sure you get to use those Spaceman emotes. That's what they're there for. Of course, everybody else, we try to keep those affordable so you can buy them with the uh, channel points as well. But I think that means we have two spots left in our founder badges. Castellia makes eight subscribers that we've had on the show since we got that affiliate uh, status here on Twitch. Doing pretty good for ourselves, Space Cadets. Doing pretty, pretty good. Now, let me just take a quick look before we end things. At who we might go ahead and raid tonight, because you know that's something I've been trying to do. make a habit of it, do it more frequently, is to raid channels. All the people that we love to see. Of course, if anybody's got any suggestions, let me know. Oh yeah, there's some people here that we can check out. Right. I 
think I've got it. I think I've got it set up. Lyra's streaming Shin Megami Hensai 5 right now. Ellie starts streaming. <laughs> That's true. Lyra is streaming. I think tonight, though, we're actually going to drop in on good friend of the show, Manayu, is what we're going to do. One of our, we haven't seen her show in a while. One of the last things that we, one of the last raids we did was Regal when he was doing Deep Space Galactic. No, Deep Rock Galactic is what it's called. So we'll try to spread the love around a bit. But of course, everybody be sure to check out the Nova Swarm channel. Fantastic work. We love to see collaborative streamers, and it's really cool that they got it built in right into their their channel. Ellie and Regal and Lyra, they're doing great work over there. Well, alrighty, Space Cadets. You know how it goes. I want to thank everybody who tuned in tonight, wherever and wherever you were, wherever and whenever you were. Now you can join us again. We're not going to be back here until Saturday, but we'll be back at our regular weekend schedule at 2 p.m. Eastern right here at Harbor Station. We'll catch you on the other side, everybody. Until then, of course, no matter what life throws your way, remember, good luck and Godspeed. Vector Spaceman's here rooting for you. Take care, Space Cadets. I hope to see you this weekend. Have a great Friday, everybody. Stick around for the raid. We'll be sending you off to visit some more impressive virtual streamers, friends of the show. Get set for that. All right, I'm off. Have a great night, everybody. This is Vector Spaceman, signing off. <laughs> <laughs>